Hello, this is Ruthann. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a rather smallish uh, type of haul, perfume haul video. And um, uh, so, since my last video, uh, my husband and I traveled to Lourdes, France, and I got this bottle of Lourdes water. And it's kind of, isn't that pretty? It's in, it, this is water. You can see the in a uh, glass statue. I thought that was really cool. So anyway, she's just gonna stay here with me for a little bit and I'm going to get started. So first up, this I have some gifts because I had a birthday uh, since my last video. So I did get a couple of gifts. First one is a perfume very well known to everybody. This is a smaller bottle. Uh, looks like 1.7 fluid ounce of pink sugar. And <clears throat> If you love perfumes, you probably know this perfume. It really just smells like pink sugar. And I'm talking about so like state fair type pink sugar. So when I was growing up, every single summer it was a big event. We always went to the state fair. And uh, I grew up in the Midwest and we have a very large state fair. And um, of course my favorite place to be as a kid was on the Midway. And they would have these huge vats of where they're making the um, cotton candy. And this smells like when you get close to that vat. So a little bit of that sponge sugar almost has a burnt, not really burn burn like black burn, but toasted or caramelized kind of a smell. And that's exactly what pink sugar smells like. It's just sugar, sugar overload, and then a little more sugar. And um, interestingly enough, when I received this, uh, I had two of my children were there and then my son-in-law. So my children are like 26 and 27 and then my son-in-law. And <clears throat> I had them smell this. None of them were familiar with this fragrance and none of them liked it. And I thought that was interesting. Even um, my husband, my son, who's 26, didn't, didn't care for it thought it was way too sweet so I love it however and I enjoy wearing it and um, so anyway that's that's perfume number one perfume number two is something a little unique this is a new um, company manufacturer that I ha I personally have discovered but it's been around since the 60s this is called Royal Hawaiian and these are Hawaiian made fragrances and this and they have a huge line <clears throat> excuse me, they're all based on their Hawaiian tropical flowers. <coughs> excuse me. And this is the tuberose. They have a um, several different ones. And tuberose, I don't know why that's the one I picked. Probably because I had been wearing fraca quite a bit and I was really into tuberose. So this is actually a parfum, a parfum or a perfume. It's the pure perfume, not an EDT. So this is just a very small little bottle um, I think 0.25 fluid ounces and it's a roller ball but let me tell you this packs a punch this is a beautiful tropical tuberose it smells like you just stepped into a uh, tropical flower garden I, if you've ever been to Hawaii now I've only been there once and I was a teenager and I do remember smelling this smell it smells just like when you're walking outside. Um, I was actually there with my parents and I was a teenager and my father was a banker and he decided to splurge on taking us all to Hawaii. He was going to a conference and then we spent a week before the conference um, island hopping. And I can remember staying in resorts and, and just being amazed um, at the beauty and the smells and the and oh my gosh anyway so this brings me right back to sitting on those benches in the afternoon after I'd gone for a swim or going out in the late evening and enjoying the warm sea air because um, it was very windy at the time that I was there so anyway I highly recommend not too expensive I want to say this probably cost in the mid to upper 20s for this fragrance and it lasts all day this is a true EDP or perfume and it really really lasts even though it's a roller ball I don't know that I'd even want to spray it because I think it would be too strong and then I have one more from this company 
And this is the main one that I purchased <clears throat> that I had seen a review on for Grantica. And this one, I love the name of it. It's called Wicked Wahine. Wicked Wahine. You can see the label there. It says Honolulu, Hawaii by Royal Hawaiian Original Perfume. So I believe, though, that this is actually, it's called a perfume, but I thought it was an EDT. Well, I could be wrong. This looks like it's an actual perfume. So here's the box. So according to my research, the company started in the 40s. This perfume ha has consistently been their most popular, and it was formulated in 19... 68. So just to give you an idea of what the company says about it, they describe it as alluring and unforgettable. A subtle hint of orange flower, rose, exotic night blooming jasmine blended with musk and sandalwood. An enticing and alluring combination. So it's described, and they also describe it as timeless, inviting. Okay. Anyway, what I'm telling you is this is really old school. This to me smells like the 70s. Now it's it was first origin, originally made in 68. I wasn't around in 68, but it smells, when I first sprayed it on, it's not at all what I expected. I thought it was going to be a floral, like a tropical floral. And there are tropical florals in here, but you have to think about the context in the age in which it was made. So it, the 60s loved heavy greens and a lot of animalic musks. So think about what was really popular at the time. Um, things like Chanel number no. five, um, Balmain's um, Vent Vert, uh, Charlie. If you really were on a budget, Charlie was all about Charlie. This to me smells like a tropical Charlie. So there's a little bit, I pick up a little amber mixed with spices, mixed with tropical flowers. That is exactly what this smells like to me. Maybe a little bit of soapiness uh, in the background, but it's not prominent, but it's in the background. It really is old school. If you like old school fragrances, if you like Charlie, if you like tropical flowers, but it has to be with a vintage twist, I highly recommend this perfume and it wasn't too expensive. It was definitely under 50. It was somewhere between 30 and 50. I don't remember exactly. But um, I'm really going to enjoy it. When I first sprayed it, I thought, oh, I don't know about this. But now that I've worn it, you can see I've already put a dent in it. Uh, I really am enjoying it. And it lasts really, really, really well. So I'm definitely going to try more from this um, line. And I really want to get into these tropical flowers. So I have a couple more. First, I want to cover, and this isn't something that I usually talk about, and this is a perfume oil. So this is perfume oil inspired by Fraca. Fraca, and it's the name of the company is Perfume perf, Parfumolio. So I wanted you to be able to see that. And that actually lists the notes. So Fraca, let me see if I can get out my actual bottle of Fraca here. Here it is. All right, so Robert Piguet, Fraca, or in English, Fracas or Fracas. This is an old school Hollywood fragrance. If you watch any, um, there's a couple of channels that talk about vintage old Hollywood makeup, perfume, things like that. This is where I found out about Fraca, was on that channel. And a lot of old school, like 40s and 50s, big Hollywood stars wore this. It was hugely popular. This is a, a by a French house um, called Robert Piguet. Robert Piguet was a the name of the owner, founder, and perfumer. He has since passed away, and I believe it's now owned, it passed to his son, and now it's owned by someone else. Anyway, I'm not going to travel with this big bottle. This this bottle was really expensive. I asked for this for a gift for my husband, and it was, I want to say, close to $200, which is really, really at the top end of my budget, beyond my budget. And I only asked for these for as gifts. So I'm not going to travel with this, and I'm, I'm going to use this very judiciously because it's very expensive. So what I do is I buy dupes. 
and I also buy dupe lotions. And I wanted to tell you about this company here. If you like Fraca, if you like Tube Rose, um, I highly recommend this perfume dupe company. It lasts for hours, travels well, and it is an exact copy. Um, I can't tell the difference between the two. So I just wanted to bring that to you guys and as an FYI. I always appreciate these kinds of hidden gems. This bottle is a, I don't even know how big it is, 10 mils, and it was under $20. All right. I have one more, and this was a birthday gift, another birthday gift. So I got the original Chanel number 19. So <clears throat> I was at last December, my husband and I went to a big um, uh, department store in downtown Montreal. My husband is from <clears throat> Montreal, and they told me that Chanel number no. 19 had been discontinued, and I was just crestfallen because I wanted to buy it. Come to find out it's not discontinued. They're just not carrying it in the mainstream stores anymore. <clears throat> it seems like anyone only wants Chance and all those new ones that really don't perform, and I'm not super impressed with those new ones. I'm sure they're pretty, but I really like the old school ones. So what I did was I um, sent, I found it online and you can still buy it from uh, Chanel.com in their online purchases. You can buy all Chanel number no. five. You can buy Cristal there too. And this is not the Poudre. This is the real deal. So I have for many years owned the EDT Chanel number no. 19. And these are different. They're similar, but they're different. Um, Chanel number no. 19 is the EDT here is much more green on the opening and the Eau de Parfum is a bit more soapy powdery than it is green in the opening. To me, this has a heavy dose of galbanum, powdery, soapy galbanum, and the green is not as crisp and fresh as the Eau de Toilette. This Eau de Parfum is a bit darker. It's, it's a bit more deep, deep woods. It's more melancholy. All right, so this is not the perfume you're going to want to wear when you need a, a mood pick-me-up. This is the kind of perfume you wear to with a power suit to a, a meeting when you want to be taken seriously. This is the kind of perfume you wear to a wake, to a funeral, maybe to Christmas. Um, Christmas is more of a happy occasion, but what I mean is it's serious. This perfume is serious. There's nothing lighthearted in this bottle. If you are looking for something when you're going to sit down and read philosophy, okay, Chanel number no. 19 would be a good choice. If you're, if it's a rainy day and you're going to have a, a cup of hot green tea and you're feeling kind of melancholy, Chanel number no. 19 is what you should wear. Is a, is a good option. If you're going to go to a library and study hard, back when I was in college, I used to study, go back in the stacks and I would study for hours. This would be a really good perfume for that. Lasts forever. It's almost got an eternal uh, lasting power. It's ladylike. It's beautiful. Um, this, from what I understand, was the signature scent for Coco Chanel herself when she was still alive um, for the last years of her life. It was not the last perfume she um, approved. That was Cristal. But she actually wore number 19. And I don't know if she wore the EDT or the EDP, to be honest with you, but this is gorgeous. Gorgeous, classic fragrance. If you like green fragrances, you have got to own one of these bottles. I'm going to say a couple more things because I have a lot to say. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is also very, believe it or not, very unisex. Like I could smell this on my husband and I would not think, oh, you're wearing a girl's perfume. Not at all. Now, the powderiness of it is there but it's not like a girly powder. There's nothing sweet, nothing lighthearted, nothing girly in particular. It's just very mature and very beautiful. And it's very unisex. I think in the 70s, people would laugh if I said it was unisex, but nowadays by today's standards, absolutely unisex. So anyway, it's gorgeous. I, I remember looking at the price when I sent the link to my husband. Um, and that's the other thing. 
is if you have trouble with your husband or someone buying you exactly what you want, what I do is I just get a link from whatever website and I email it or I text it to my husband. And I say, this is what I want. And that way I always get what I want. The other thing is, so I was telling you that my children, my adult children and my son-in-law didn't care for pink sugar. And so I sprayed this for them and they all loved it. And I'm not kidding. None of them had ever smelled it. In fact, my son was like, oh, I would date a girl wearing that. That's beautiful. That's a grown woman perfume, he said. And he was being completely honest. He was not, my, my, my son never ever says things he doesn't mean. So anyway, um, that's my take on Chanel number 19. Still beautiful, gorgeous, classic. I hope they don't take it away. But thankfully, there are a lot of perfume dupe companies out now. So I think that I can probably always have my hands on it. And um, I highly recommend it. Like I said, it lasts like a beast. Um, and it's worth every penny, in my opinion. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.